Hey guys, long time no see. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going through the medical school pathway for those who flunked the HSC. Uh, pretty much everything here also applies to dental school. Before we begin, this video is going to reference a lot of PDFs, which I will link to in the description. Please also feel free to check out my website, which will have other interesting things for pre-meds to help them get into med school. I also included a Q&A and some extra tips on the Medical Quack site. As for qualifications, I am a current second year medical student at, in Australia. And so I present to you the postgraduate medical school pathway. There are two pathways into medical school, the undergraduate and the postgraduate medical school pathway. The undergrad pathway requires an ATAR of around 95 or uh, above and so I will not be talking about it in this video. The postgraduate pathway does not consider your HSC mark, instead four other factors are involved in your acceptance. These four factors in order of acceptance are GAMSAT, Interview, WAM and Portfolio. Linked in the description is a PDF containing the requirements for each school. Each school is different and some factors are considered heavily whilst other factors are not considered at all. For example, some schools do not require a WAM or a portfolio. All schools require a GAMSAT and as of 2020, all schools will require an interview as well. Uh, previously, Queensland was the only school which did not do an interview, but now, as of 2020, I think they've implemented it as well. So knowing these requirements will become important in your second and third years as you start identifying your strengths. Whether you excel in GAMSAT, WAM or portfolio will determine what med school you go into. So let's tackle these requirements one by one. GAMSAT. GAMSAT is probably the most important factor in whether or not you land a medical spot. The six hour exam is run by ASA biannually and consists of reading comprehension, writing and science. Each school weighs sections differently and these weightings have been included in the PDF down below. Oh. So GAMSAT results only last two years. So as per ASA recommendations, take the GAMSAT in the last two years of your course. For example, if you're doing a three year course, take your GAMSAT in your second year or a four year course, take your GAMSAT in your third year. For revision, I recommend working through Desi Neal's textbooks first and then tackling the ASA GAMSAT past papers. Uh, interview. Uh, there are multiple interview formats with the MMI being the most popular. MMIs are multiple consecutive interviews at different stations with different interviewers. No impressions carry over between stations. There's a difference between um, how different schools do MMIs. UCID has a seven minute station, whilst Melbourne has a five minute station. These two minutes are important to consider when revising for their respective interviews. For revision, I recommend joining Paging Doctor Forum and delving into past interview threads. Questions from previous years have been discussed in the forum and will give you an idea of what's ahead. Now, when? WAM slash GPA is a mark given to you by a university to show how well you're doing in your course. WAM must be converted into GPA for medical school calculations. WAM is out of 100, whilst GPA is out of 7. Uh, a PDF showing the calculation has been included in the description. University of Melbourne weigh GAMSAT, Interview, and WAM one third each, while some other schools weigh WAM only a quarter, and other schools don't even consider WAM. Although WAM slash GPA may look underappreciated and even inconsequential, it's the only factor that you have control over. GAMSAT study may or may not affect marks, and interviews can sometimes be fickle. WAM is the only section where your direct effort will result in higher marks. Oh, and in addition, while your GAMSAT only lasts for two years, your WAM will last for 10. Portfolio is actually where you flex extracurriculars, not your interview. Uh, with the exception of one station in your interview. I include a link in the description to a medical school admissions portfolio template to give you an idea of what medical schools are looking for. I personally cannot say too much about the portfolio since I actually never had one. In conclusion, regardless of your HSC, um, everyone has a fair shot at getting into med school. Don't lose hope and start the grind. The best thing that you can do is to get motivated as soon as possible and to put effort towards your goal. A lot of people I know slacked off in first year and regretted how their marks were affecting their chances of getting into med school. Feel free to check out my website for more information on getting into med school and hit subscribe if you want to see more similar content. 
All of my content will always be free, so feel free to support me by subscribing. Anyways, best of luck and I'll see you in the next one.